Malaria is caught from the bite of a mosquito and that injects the parasite into our bloodstream. And the parasite then finds its way first into our liver. At that point, it just sort of grows and there's no adverse effect on the person. But then it bursts out of the liver, thousands, millions of these parasites into our bloodstream. And in our bloodstream, that's where the parasite then invades a type of cell which is in our blood, which carries oxygen around our blood. It's called a red blood cell. The parasites enter that red blood cell and they grow and they multiply and they burst out and they invade other red blood cells and they grow and they multiply and they burst out. And that's when you get the symptoms of malaria. The research group here in the, uh, in the toxicology unit have been working with, uh, with a group in the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, um, as well as other collaborators around the world, to understand the, the basic processes, the fundamental processes that the parasite needs to survive in our red blood cells. And so if we could understand those basic processes, then we can understand what it is that allows the parasite at a biochemical level to live in our red blood cells. So we've been looking very specifically at a group of proteins that are just specific to the parasite themselves. And these proteins are called protein kinases. We found out that those protein kinases um, are essential for the parasite to live. And one particular protein kinase called PKG is absolutely essential for some of the fundamental processes in the parasite. And we've come to learn through our research that PKG acts as a central part of a biochemical mechanism which keeps the parasite alive. So we have identified 69 parasite proteins which change their phosphorylation status if we inhibit our protein of interest. And these 69 proteins are involved in diverse biological functions. And, and there are proteins which are involved in invasion of red blood cells. So if we block PKG, there are proteins which shows decrease in phosphorylation and we also check whether if we inhibit this protein of interest whether we get block in invasion of red blood cells and that's what exactly we have found in this study we not only show that proteins which are involved in invasion show decrease in phosphorylation but we also show if we inhibit this protein there is inhibition of invasion of red blood cells protein phosphorylation driven by protein kinase g is an essential process for the parasite to survive. If we can generate drugs against that target, that protein kinase G, then we would have a cure for malaria. There is an inhibitor now, but that is not an inhibitor which can be used in humans. But the next step will be to identify the right inhibitor for this kinase, which can go for the human trials. So the people that we're aiming these drugs at are of course some of the poorest people in the world, but very importantly, uh, women uh, who are pregnant and, uh, and children in particular suffer from malaria and very devastatingly so. So the drugs have to be not only very good at killing the parasite, but also extremely safe. It's a tough job to raise drugs which are so what they call efficacious, so good at doing their job of killing the parasite, but at the same time are completely safe to give to the old, to the sick, to women who are pregnant and to children.